A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Playing by heart. The Tower of London was built at the time of William the Conqueror. Over the period of nine centuries, the tower was used as a royal residence and a place where public executions were often held. As well as this, it served as the most famous London prison. There was also once a zoo here. Nowadays, it's a tourist attraction. Here tourists can see the sinister tower, listen to quotations from Richard III, and they will be told about the plague which broke out at the end of the 16th century. It was the time of Shakespeare, with the Globe and Blackfriars Fiettas, and the muddy water of the River Thames. Everything has changed since then. Nevertheless, most probably he liked it. All his life he wanted adventures. He was in London in 1964. April wasn't the best month of the year, but it was impossible to choose when you're born. The 400th anniversary of the greatest English playwright was celebrated then. By amazing coincidence, one of the members of the Soviet delegation also turned 50 that year. That person was Shaken Imanov. Once, after reading three books describing Shakespeare's life, Shaken paid me a visit. He brought the three folios and put them on the table. These books have determined my attitude towards Shakespeare's private life. They also influenced my attitude towards life in general to a great extent, he said proudly. He played the role of Petruccio and showed real genius. His school taught the right things. You have to live correctly on the stage and on the screen. It was his main creed. His acting was brilliant and he moved like a king on the stage. He showed great agility. Chapter 1. Tis charity to show. Why is the audience so attracted to the play? Perhaps the reason for this interest is in Shakespeare himself. His works aren't limited to only one national culture. Shakespeare belongs to all humanity. Shakespeare wrote The Taming of the Shrew during the outbreak of plague. Aymanov also played the main part in it during a difficult time. The aim was to give people hope and enjoyment in life rather than oblivion. It was in Alma-Ata during the war when everything was done for the front. On the stage of the Kazakh National Theatre, there was a brilliant mixture of Italy, England and Imanov. During the war, the play was filled with lights, jokes, fiery temperament and human tenderness, and lit with footlights. It's impossible to forget Imanov's Petruccio. He was a real man, winner and the clever master of his own fate. Many years have passed since, and many people have a lot to recall about that time. But Petruccio is the one who is often recollected. Everybody watched and then talked about the Taming of the Shrew play performed by the Kazakh Fieta in the Kazakh language. I was engrossed in it and went to the Kazakh Fieta many times. I was interested in the actors working there. The theatre was very good and the team of actors was really talented. But everything started before the war when Shaken lived in Semipalatinsk, studied to become a teacher and was engaged in amateur performances. I was 19 and cherished a dream of becoming an actor. When the opera house opened, they went to villages looking for actors. My brother from Semipalatinsk and Musrepov found Imanov. Shaken joked that he hadn't studied acting, which captured him thanks to Musrepov and Kornishpayev, filled his soul and helped him reach the peak. He really managed to grasp the immensity starting from clown acts to Shakespeare's philosophical depth.
Among the cultural figures evacuated to Almaty, there were famous directors of the Mossovet Theater, Boris Bibikov, who was known as Bib by actors, and his wife Olga Pijova. They were legendary people who created legends. They directed the legendary play and said that the creative nature of Kazakh actors was close to Shakespeare's plays. The Taming of the Shrew opened in October 1943. Petruccio Imanov is spirited and emotional on stage. Is he Italian? No, he's a young Kazakh who achieved total transformation. Nevertheless, he remains a Kazakh, because only a Kazakh can portray a rider skillfully riding an imaginary horse and play with a real whip. It was a time which provided mutual enrichment for us. Actors communicating with Kazakh people, and for Kazakh people who were very good actors. All the theatres were packed, despite everything, and the friendly audience enjoyed all the plays. I saw it for myself. There was scant scenery, but the acting was very expressive. Shakespeare, who was an author, actor and director, also didn't use rich scenery. According to Bibikov, the actors are the ones who create a play and he taught to live the role, not to mimic it. It was necessary to know a lot of nuances about everyday history, including bows, sitting posture, behavior and manners. They had to know about the behavior of people of that time. Chapter 2 and where two raging fires meet together. He asked whether I liked his acting. I answered that his biomechanics and self-possession were outstanding. He had a well-trained body, was handsome, and his tall glistening body reminded me of a leopard's. It was Alma Atta in 1966. The last preparations before going on stage were being done. Some finishing touches, including an earring in his left ear, were needed. Little is known about the Stratford Bard, however, a majority of Shakespearean scholars agree that William wore an earring in his left ear. Many critics and theatergoers think that The Taming of the Shrew is the best work which was translated into the Kazakh language. It's natural because Petruccio started speaking Kazakh thanks to writer Awezov. To tell the truth, Mukhtar Omakanovich Awezov's translation gives us as much pleasure as the translation into Russian. Acting it provides almost physical enjoyment. There's this sparkling dialogue when two people in love started this age-old game. Can a video really convey the aura and atmosphere during the play? My friend from Moscow took off simultaneous interpretation headphones a long time ago and leaned forward. The old woman attracted his attention. She was whispering the complete Shakespearean text in Kazakh before the actors pronounced it. A lot of theatre goers knew the plays by heart, and if an actor forgot his lines, the whole audience recited them acting as a collective prompter. The biomechanics, which a friend of Imanov, Dombrovsky, talked about, were only the beginning. Shaken didn't just study, he absorbed the whole world of Shakespeare, finding parallels within his own soul. The Taming of the Shrew is full of sly wisdom, humor, cheerfulness and tremendous optimism in a way that's very close to the Kazakh people. A good wife brings happiness to a family. This truth is acknowledged by any nation. <laughs> the play ran for 20 years in theaters. Aymanov wasn't the only actor whose acting attracted attention. The tremendous Kadisha Bukeva played the role of Katrina. Kalibek Kwanishpaev brilliantly acted the part of the girl's father. They were the most outstanding actors of the epoch. 
Vera Maretskaya came, and I appeared there without my father, and was standing near Uncle Shaken Aymanov. She approached him and asked, Shakenchik, why are you here? Aren't you acting today? No, Shaken Musin is acting today. What about Kalibek? No, he's also busy. At least Cholpan will act today. Cholpan is Cholpan Janzebekova. Okay, thank God. Perhaps she had brought her friends to show them actors. Chapter 3. It is incredible to believe. It was a large antique key made of papier mache. In spring 1964, Shaken Imanov went to England as a member of the Soviet delegation. With due ceremony, he was presented with a symbolic key to Birmingham for excellent acting in the plays by William Shakespeare. It's said that Londoners are standoffish, but it's just a myth like the one about London fog. For sure, there hasn't been either a London standoffishness or London fog for a long time. They recall that thunderous applause broke out in the theatre. Thus, Imanov was really worthy of receiving the key to the city where Shakespeare Institute is. Incidentally, in London, Shaken recited Othello's monologue in Kazakh. All languages submit to Shakespeare. Those who saw Imanov playing the role of Othello could see the destruction not only of love, but of idealism and life itself too. Now you see the stage. He's coming to his wife, Desdemona. She was his life, but now his life is crushed. Later, Imanov again received applause, but the reason was different. In a hotel, he treated English friends to the Kazakh dish Beshbamak. He made his guests follow Kazakh tradition and eat with their hands. He managed to make standoffish Englishmen eat Beshbamak, as it should be done with hands, with five fingers. Not everyone could manage to do it, because it was necessary to explain to those people that the whole nation, no, whole nations eat this dish with hands, and that it has a certain meaning. He was like the son of a powerful magnet attracting all the people. He liked noisy feasts and funny jokes. Shaken himself was loved as the actor playing the part of Carefree Petruccio, because people felt that the nature of the character and the actor coincided amazingly. As Imanov's friend Lev Varshavsky said, the image was so bright that it was brought into new existence in a film. In Our Dear Doctor film, Shaken and Kadisha play the parts of themselves during the rehearsal of Shakespeare's play. Epilogue. And I do hope good days and long to see. There was another anniversary. The 450th anniversary of Shakespeare and the 100th anniversary of Imanov. It seems that anniversaries also established a connection between them. I think I wouldn't have written my Shakespearean dead, swarthy lady and royal rescript without Imanov and his speculations expressed with great sincerity, pain and inspiration. Imanov's deep understanding was necessary in order to comprehend that the tragic element of the great actor and playwright's life hidden behind the dry facts of his biography. Shakespeare is the highest peak for an actor and he conquered it. All his life he liked fun, felt deeply and remained obstinate. It's impossible to tame an obstinate person. He told me not to be sad. Cheer up and not behave like a fool. If you fail today, you would manage it tomorrow. But if you felt down and lost self-confidence, your talent would be fruitless and you wouldn't be able to create anything because an unhappy creator who lacked self-confidence was like a failure 
which you are looking back at. Don't praise us so much. We're artists, but we are not without sin. We just have big hearts. 